From Estoril to Barcelona, the European Talent Cup touches down on the great Catalan city with first time and double winner last time out, Carlos Cano, coming into round three of the championship, leading proceedings by five points over Marco Morelli. The Spaniard and Argentinian have shown themselves to be the class of the field so far in 2024, but Morelli took the upper hand in qualifying for the second pole position of the season. Situated 32 kilometers outside the city of Barcelona, the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya is a true test of rider and machine as both work in perfect harmony to extract the absolute maximum on the road to glory as we gear up for European Talent Cup. Well, we've had two bumper races so far here at the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya Junior GP and Moto2, but European Talent Cup with Soul Race is up next with myself, Liam Hodgins, and Chris Jordan taking you through proceedings here today at the magnificent circuit here on the outskirts of Barcelona, just outside Montmelo. The weather has played havoc so far this weekend on Friday and Saturday with riders struggling at times to find their way through with a dry setup being an absolute must. But for Marco Morelli, has been a perfect weekend so far after he struggled, so to speak, last time out in Estoril. So as we come into round three, five points separate the top two, and this is how it all happened back in Estoril. Marco Morelli, who was your championship leader at the time, went from the mid-pack of the grid, but it was Carlos Cano who was the race one winner from the day after some riders went further down, but the top two started off into the distance with Cano leading Morelli, but as they battled further back, it would be Carlos Cano that would take his first victory as a rookie in the class. Could he back it up at race number two? As lights went out, the conditions were a lot drier for that one, but the clouds were looking in the background. It was battles galore throughout the pack as the 10 and the 36 got their elbows out down the home street, and it was Peroni that went for the lead as Morelli crashed out after contact with another rider, but it came across the line, it was Carlos Cano that took victory once more, back-to-back -back delight in Estoril, and he became your new championship leader coming in to Catalonia. So, victory galore for Carlos Cano after a disastrous Mizano, after he picked up a penalty for both races, but double delight in Estoril, however, Championship leader has another penalty coming into this race, which we will touch upon a little bit in a little bit. However, his championship rival, Marco Morelli, on the 97 MLAV racing machine, the number 97, who has been rider in many ways to speak so far this year, Chris, as we can see him on screen, the rider to beat as he goes from his second pole position of the season. Yeah, what an absolute talent the young MLAV rider is hailing from Argentina. And this is how he won pole position. Feel good, no? Uh, always a uh, pole position is, is so good. Uh, yeah, I feel very well with the bike. And yeah, I did the lap by alone. So, so yeah, I'm happy. I, I had a good piece, so maybe tomorrow I will try. And, and yeah, try to to break the group, like in Misano, in Estoril it was not possible. But here I feel good, so maybe I try this another time. And yeah, maybe the group, it's gonna be hard if it's a group, no? Because David Gonzalez is strong, uh, I think Perron is strong, Pugliese. Yeah, the, the front group always four or five people. Four riders is very good and his quality are, are so good, no? But yeah, like I say, no? Try to break the, the race. And yeah, it's one o'clock, so maybe hot. The race does start at one o'clock local time, and Chris, you've just been out there. It is starting to become very warm out there ahead of this 14 lap European Town Cup race ahead. The tunes are blaring, the sun is beating down, it's quite toasty out there. We can only be in Barcelona. And well, yeah, it's perfect condition for racing. It is quite warm out there too, after a little sojourn through, and you also sojourn through <laughs> your way to Parc Ferme in the last race. Let's see how they handle the conditions 
Marco Morelli has shown he can handle the heat plenty of times. He's already got a win this season. That came in Mizano race too. He hasn't been off the podium. Well, I was going to say he hasn't been off the podium yet in a race he has finished. Yeah, Marco Morelli there. You can see Macaulay Webb holding the umbrella for the Argentinian there. Macaulay Webb leading the MLAV team, the team manager for that. And they're very close in that team. We did see on Friday evening on their Instagram page that there was a, a nice little moment between Marco Morelli, Eddie O'Shea and Evan Belford feeding each other strawberries. So they all got on very well down in the MLAV team, which is obviously very good to see. And well, David Gonzalez, second spot, podiums in Mizano, unfortunately crashing out in Estoril, was out on track watching him in Q2 yesterday. And I must admit coming through just like Marco Morelli, turns 12, 13 and 14 was just able to eke out a gap ahead of the riders that were chasing him. Helped his teammate though, who we're about to see Gabriel Tassini on the AC Racing team up into the front row, the number four. So he's on the outside of row one. And the Italian rider we can see on screen, his best qualifying of the season. Yeah, Tassini, one of those riders to benefit from a raft of penalties handed out after qualifying yesterday. Initially, I think we had Valentin Perone, Carlos Cano, Gonzalo Perez on the front row, but they have all been sanctioned for multiple offences and now it will start at the back of the grid among some other riders. But just touching on Gonzalez, he's a very talented rider. We saw, you saw the best of him commentating. He picked up a P2 and P3 in Mizano. Estoril didn't go his way. He actually started towards the back of the grid, P28 after a really wet qualifying where the conditions didn't suit him. He came through Q1, of course, here this weekend and is now up onto the front row. So he is certainly one to watch, as is the rider on screen. That's Giulio Pugliese, a race winner in the opening round in race one in Mizano. Hasn't managed to find that form just yet. He crashed out in race two in Mizano, did remount for a P17. While in Estoril in the West, he picked up a P10 and a P6 in the dry. Jesus Torres was a rider to shine, though, in the West in Estoril. Yeah, Jesus Torres, a uh, stalwart of the class so far. As we can see, picked up a podium last time out in Estoril. Just, he's gone better and better so far this season. 10th, 7th, 6th, and then second place last time out in Estoril. So watch out for Jesus Torres and the rider that we just saw there, Jesus Torres and his teammate Pau Alcina on the Team Michelle Galitha 0-0 machines. As I've said so, my, so many times in this broadcast so far, the last couple of Q2 sessions, I was out at turn 10 watching the sessions. And after the session was over, Torres and Alcina came down towards turn 10 and they were both gesticulating to each other, really annoyed at each other. I guess one might have gotten in the way of the other. And both were so focused on each other, they completely missed turn 10 and ran off into the gravel trap. So thankfully both were okay, but some hot headedness down in Team Estrella Galicia there. Yeah, Kernantinez then the Venezuelan rider on our screens just a moment ago. He's P12 in the championship, a rookie in this class, but we have seen him battling at the front plenty of times. A P5 in Mizano race two he was running with the top guys but tailed off a little bit as Zani and Peroni relegated him late on Carlos Cano P25 on the grid after being given a penalty for slow riding through three sectors back of the grid start for Cano as you can see there came from the back of the grid and Mizano both races to finish sixth but when he starts in the front he's hard to beat Chris a new protege of Emilio Alzamora we just saw him on the grid as well and Carlos Cano expect to see fireworks from him in this race. Yeah, he's a hugely talented young rider. He did the double in Estoril, starting on the front row. And as you mentioned, he came from the back of the grid in Mizano for a double P6. He's got to do it the hard way again, but I would not bet against him picking up some good points. Neither would I bet against Valentin Perone. He's got Red Bull rookies experience. He was part of a Red Bull rookies Argentinian 1-2 with Marco Morelli. And as you can see, he was on the podium in the dry in Estoril. He's a very talented rider. Initially had qualified P2, but one of those riders to be sanctioned and starts at the back of the grid alongside the likes of Cano, Perez, Zani, Marianas, Nicolas, all of them, and the Costa and Olivares, so plenty of riders receiving penalties. I'm pretty sure if you didn't get a penalty, you were one of the very few yesterday. Here's uh, Suri Ikigami, the 15-year-old Japanese rider. You've been commentating on him last year. Uh, yeah, Ikigami. The Cup. Of ATC fame is correct. <laughs> 
a talented rider for sure, the 15-year-old. He's a rookie in the class. A DNF in Mizano plus a P12 finish on debut. So pretty good outing. Esseril was pretty good for him too. P15 in race one. But then in race two, out of nowhere on the final two laps, entered into podium contention. It was a large group of riders. It was myself and Elliot York and commentary duties. And we were taken aback because the Japanese rider Ikigami appeared from absolutely nowhere, coming from the back of the grid to be... I think he led the race or was in P2 at one point. Amid the excitement, I can't quite remember exactly. But in the well, end, he, the he finished P4. A superb ride from Ikigami. Came from absolutely nowhere to just miss out on a podium. Yeah, Ikigami, another one of the fastest Japanese riders coming through the Asia Talent Cup system on the road to Moto GP, as was Edu Gutierrez in the middle of the third row. Pau Alcina on the other Australia Galicia 0 0 team, as I said a few minutes ago, came into a bit of war between himself and his teammate Jesus Torres at the end of Q2. So, Hopefully the team sat them both down, killed their heads, and there'll be no issue here today as Pau Alcina goes from the outside of row three in ninth position. Well, the fans are out in their droves here. It's a very busy day here, Chris, in Barcelona. There's been a lot of excitement around Junior GP. I must admit, for all three of the opening rounds, but we've got a bumper crowd in the grandstands and, of course, in the paddock. I was out uh, yesterday, and you can see a lot of fans around the entire circuit so it's great to see that the fans have come out in their droves here this weekend to see the likes of Marco Morelli, David Gonzalez, obviously Carlos Cano and Agostinelli, the Vietnamese rider with a very Italian name. Yeah, stars of the future without a doubt on show here today. A couple of years down the line, do not be surprised when you see quite a few of these names line up in the Moto3, Moto2 and perhaps even the MotoGP classes. But your grid today for the sole European Talent Cup race sees Marco Morelli start on pole position ahead of David Gonzalez and Gabriel Cesar Ticini. Then it is... Pugliesi, Torres, and Tinez, Ikigami, Gutierrez, and Alcina on row three. Luca Agostinelli heads up row four ahead of Longarala and Cayet with Fernandez, Pantialakis, and Bellon on row five. Bertola, Gabarini, and San Juan are on the sixth one. Boxberger, Rastani and Daniel Jr. are on the seventh row. Before we get into some big names on row eight and nine, Bujosa, podium finisher in Estoril, is alongside Miroslavov and Perone. Cano, Perez, Zani are on this penultimate row with Nicolas, Olivares and the Costa. You're at the back of the grid for this race here in Barcelona. It's saying something when you've got six riders behind the two that came through the last chance race earlier on today, Bajosa and Peter Slovath as well. So as the riders make their way down towards turn number one on the start of the warm-up lap, we've got 30 riders strong field for this one. The European Talent Cup, one of the first steps on the road to Moto GP. And of course, not the first step because we've got a great talent system all the way through, which includes the many GP series. And for any of the Brits out there, the young Ethan Sparks won race number one in Austria earlier on this weekend. So expect to see names like Ethan Sparks and of course a lot of those other riders coming through the mini GP into European Talent Cup later on down the line. The riders go through turn four towards turn five we see the beautiful setting of the rolling hills of Montmelo in the background air temperature 20 degrees celsius track temperature up to a whopping 38 degrees celsius that's almost 20 Chris more than what we started this morning yeah it's hot out there Lee. really is <laughs> I won't I won't uh, wrap it up or sugarcoat it anyway <laughs> it is hot on track out there and we've seen without giving too much away how those track temperatures have affected tires in previous races we've had today in Moto2 and Junior GP. We'll see how they get on here with the Pirellis in, um, as this class will continue to adapt, of course, with them. So we'll see how that 38 degree mark on track affects the tire temperatures. Yeah, we saw a lot of uh, tire, tire problems come into effect in Moto2. Not so much Junior GP, but uh, Mizano, we did see it play a factor 
and European Talent Cup. There is the championship standings. Morelli, five points behind Carlos Cano. They both go from first and 25th on the grid. With Morelli taking up in hand so far. So it's a very close championship battle between the top two so far. And the Raiders slowly making their way around the final couple of corners on the warm-up lap. Just remember, this is the European Talent Cup's sole race of the day. We had two races in Mizano, two races in Estoril. We've had three different winners so far this season. Pugliese, race number one, Mizano. Your rider on screen, Marco Morelli, race two, Mizano. And of course, the double up doubler, Carlos Cano, last time out. But he will be starting from the back of the grid. And well, he has a big fight back to come from 25th on the grid to victory battle. But if anyone could do it, you better believe Carlos Cano will be the rider to do that. Green flag waving in the background. The red flag pulls off to the left of the screen. The red lights will come on any second. Now the revs will be rising. It looks like we're holding them for a while there, but now we've got the red lights, revs rising, and out the lights go. A bit of a slow stop. We've got yellow flags in the background. Hopefully all the riders can miss the stall. The st oh, we've got oh. the rider down. We've got a couple down. And Unfortunately, they're double waved yellows. Hopefully, the two riders have collided are okay. But for now, it looks like it will be the four of Tessini taking the lead ahead of Marco Morelli. Morelli around the outside, B takes the lead, and Gonzalez trying to take advantage of that as well. But hopefully, Chris, as we just saw there, the were waved yellows for a rider installed in the background. And hopefully, both are okay. That's a 72. It looks like it's Costa and Gabarini. And maybe, yeah, Gabarini. And down so. there. We'll get a replay of what happened. But back out front, thankfully, it looks like they are okay. Disaster for their race start. But back out front, then, it is Marco Morelli who has taken the whole shot out of turn one. Started on pole, he still holds the lead. David Gonzalez started P2, he remains in P2. Gabriel Tassini started P3, remains in P3. I want to stop you there just for now, Chris. Carlos Cano already in 10th spot Ooh. after the first couple of sectors there. I just saw him coming to shot into turn 10. So Carlos Cano, not 10, he's 6th now. So Carlos Cano is already up 19 positions from 25th on the grid. The number 73, will just, uh, 71, we'll just see in the background there. And uh, coming into shot, fifth position for the Spanish championship leader. Just attack, detached a little bit from Pugliese in fourth, but from 25th on the grid, the 72 Art Box Racing Team rider, your championship leader, Morelli, who's the closest championship rival to the Spaniards, is already leading and already got that gap up to about seven tenths of a second as Pugliese, your winner from Mizano, already making his way through to the podium spot, tapping his seat there to tell the number four of Tessini to follow him, but here we are, replay of the start. And thankfully, oh, oh, we uh, see a stalled oh start. Oh my and it's goodness a me! Yeah, it looked like it was Gabarini that stalled in the start. And the cost had nowhere to go. As here we go once more. Just look at the back to the right. There you go. Oh, oh clipped by it looks like Marionis Nicolas, who was starting at the back of the grid as well. Clipped initially was Gabarini by Nicolas, and then the cost had nowhere to go. So stormed into the side of it. But thankfully, since we're seeing those replays, we can only imagine Chris that both riders were able to. Move walk away from that one. Yeah, as the action continues here, thankfully it looks like both riders are relatively unscathed from what could have been a nasty incident, but thankfully the majority of riders also avoided uh, Gavarini at the start. Now back out front, Morelli still leads, Gonzalez is still in second, but Giulio Pugliese has met his move in third position. And look out, look out, who is just behind the Italian? Why, well, it's Carlos Cano starting from the back of the grid. It doesn't matter to the number 71. He is straight into the victory fight. And a couple of the other riders from the back of the grid, the likes of Valentin Perone are up there. He's in seven. Zani yeah. has moved up into point scoring positions. I'm just having a scan through. Pujosa started at the back of the grid as well, but coming through the last chance race this morning, podium finisher in Estoril. He's currently running in 17th. So progress made for some of these riders who were handed penalties and big names who started at the back. One of the riders we expected to see in this fight for the podium was Jesus Torres. He's had a disaster of an opening couple of laps. He's gone from fifth on the grid down to 25th on the grid. He's behind his teammate Marianas Nicholas, who started from the back of the grid after a penalty. So not sure what happened there to Jesus Torres on the 22 
team Estrella Galicia 0-0 machine, but he's well out of contention now. One of the big players we assumed will be in this race, but the biggest player of the lot, Marco Morelli, storming into the lead already as he come across the line to click off lap number two, a 1.2 second advantage over David Gonzalez. Ju uh, Giulio Pugliese on the 31, just holding touch with Gonzalez right now. Carlos Cano, seven tenths further back from Pugliese. Cano actually has been shuffled all the way back down to seventh. So Ikigami Peroni into senior now in front of Carlos Cano, who has become a bit of a master from riding from the back of the grid. But now he's uh, dropping back ever so slightly. And at the front of the grid, a 151.479 from Marco Morelli is the fastest lap of the race to date. And that is half a second more than David Gonzalez. He's opened up a near one second gap to his closest rival on track. Nobody else came close. Well, Valentin Peroni was a 151.5. Apart from that, everyone else is in the high, 50, high 151s and 152s. Oh, bit of a bobble there for Tessini as he made a move on Cano. So, so Cano there was almost in the dirt along with Tessini, but thankfully Tessini on AC Racing Team Machine, the number four, was able to hold it. And Carlos Cano, it looks like in the initial burst of speed that he had, can't hold the momentum just yet, and is slowly dropping back as Ikigami and Peroni now start to gap him. But it looks like the top three have opened up a bit of a gap. Morelli is clear of this at the moment, and Gonzalez and Pugliese, they're the ones battling it out so far for the last podium positions. They are second ahead of this battle for fourth, which includes Ikigami Peroni. Cano and Tessini, who almost had a bit of a coming together at turn number five. Just behind them, Pau Alcina, uh, Gutierrez, and uh, Longarella. As Longarella on the 45, rounding out the top 10. Now, Jesus Torres, who we just mentioned, had dropped all the way back down to 25th. He's already making the improvements and he's in two 18th position. So Torres here must have had a bit of a moment on lap one or two, and he's now starting to fight back as we watch Peroni making a move on Ikigami. Yeah, keep an eye on the number 73 coming into turn one. He's actually just dropped behind the number 34 of Ikigami. Ikigami defending well the, there, the slipstream. The Argentinian looked like he had the run coming into turn one on the Japanese rider. Just looking at the timing there screens. There it is. Uh, there we go. And just looking at the timing screens there, Pugliese has now made his way into second. He was a tenth of a second faster than your race leader Ooh. as Peroni is <laughs> telling the riders behind him. That's usually like a, a red rag to a bull when you tell that to another rider. Instead of wanting to help, each other get to the front you usually just try and duff the other rider up into the next corner for a moment i thought he was out of the seat i thought it was a leg up there hence my exaggerated reaction to what he was doing but i we've saw, seen I saw what happened there you were looking at the time monitor you came back to the screen so easily done we've all been there and, and done that but uh is ikigami that currently leads that battle for now peroni and cano part of it but what can pugliese do your race winner from mizano back well a month ago already gonzalez so it's a top three from that race in the top three and race number uh, and the only race here in Catalonia. Morelli leading the way 1.5 seconds ahead of Pugliese and Gonzalez as we watch the riders peel into turn 10. These two have got a bit of a gap over Cano, Peroni, Ikigami and Tassini and it looks like they're gapping them even more as the lap continues a couple of tenths faster in sectors one, two and three so far. Coming around the final corners of this lap then, lap four. It is still Marco Morelli who holds the outright advantage at nearly 1.5 seconds. Giulio Pugliese running in behind 1.7 seconds now, but he's got David Gonzalez all over his rear wheel. Will we see Gonzalez get into the slipstream here and get the run into turn one to take P2 off the hands of the Italian? You see, we see him now come out to the right-hand side of Pugliese. It looks like he does have the run to the line. Will he make the block pass into turn one? He absolutely will. Pugliese slots into P3 as Gonzalez snatches P2 away from the Italian. Carlos Cano then is in fourth position as, well, has, is he? It's all changed there as they come through. As the timing screen is jumping everywhere. It seems Peroni now has the advantage, number 73, in that battle for fourth. Previous championship leader Carlos Cano is in fifth ahead of Seriu Ikigami. There we have confirmation with the number four of Gabriel Tassini who started in on the front row of P3. He has slipped down to P7, but is still on for a strong point scoring finish. I was thinking that maybe Pugliese and Gonzalez were starting to reel Marco Morelli in, but Morelli on a previous lap did respond to 151.72, tenths faster 
than your Raiders in second and third possession. But it's this battle here that we're keeping a close eye on, and it's Peroni that leads the way so far ahead of Kano, Ikigami, and Tassini. Tassini has shown very well so far. Qualified third, or well, starting third after a couple of penalties for the other Raiders, but nonetheless was up there using Gonzalez's his teammate, the Raider in second, as a bit of a toe, a bit of a marker in qualifying yesterday, but still had to right the thing to get it up into third spot. And he's well and truly in the mix for fourth position in this race so far. But for now, the gap from Morelli to Gonzalez is up to two seconds. Morelli, through this section of the circuit yesterday, was like a knife through butter, smooth as you like through this section of the track. And that's where he was really gaining the two or three tenths that he needed to solidify his pole position. And for now, he's doing it once again as once more, he's even faster on this lap. A 151.6 is the only rider in the 51s as the rest have dropped down to the low 52s on that previous lap. As we see a move potentially by Ikigami from sixth down towards turn one, chopping across the front of Peroni and Cano. Ikigami now leads the battle for fourth. Yeah, Morelli in a world of his own here in Barcelona. He's got a huge advantage, 2.2 seconds over Gonzalez and Pugliese. Well, it is now Ikigami who holds the advantage in the battle for fourth, but not for long. Cano fires it up the inside of Peroni, but he won't make it stick. Ikigami does manage to still just about hold on. Yeah, and Cano does get the better of Peroni. Both of these riders, remember, starts it at the back of the grid, and now they're battling for fourth position. And just a reminder that Cano is your championship leader, but a P4 here, he's currently running a P5, but if he is to get the P4 finish and Morelli is to win, it won't be enough to defend his championship lead, leaving this round here in Catalonia. Another rider that got uh, back of the grid start was uh, Pablo Oliveras. So you can see him just coming into the back of screen behind this battle for fourth and eighth position on the Mira Racing Defending Work Team CEO. He's come from the back of the grid as well, and he's well and truly well inside the top 10 with his teammate, Leonardo Zani. Who also, just started, the, that back who also started the back of the grid as well, so I had to double check that one there. But we've got a yellow flag at turn four, so one of the Raiders further back has gone down. Not quite sure who that could be. Bujosa, it looks could like be Bujosa. Bujosa. It is Bujosa, yeah, Bujosa. Yeah. So the Raider that came through the last chance race earlier on today, he's had a nightmare of a weekend as Bojosa, so oh, he's just, just running wide. So yeah, maybe a, a technical problem there with Bojosa. Just drop it and make your way home, man. Make your way off to Portimao in a few weeks' time down to the beach. Oh, looks like he's going through the beach in the gravel trap there, does it? It looks like he may have actually rejoined coming out of uh, turn four. And on our track map, he has stopped uh, turn six. So maybe another incident just a couple of corners later. But we're focused on the front of the pack here. It is Morelli running away with it. Gonzalez now holds second. Ooh. That was very close. As Tassini tries a little move up the inside. He's been running just behind this battle for fourth in seventh place. It looked like he was trying to time his move there. And that was on Ikigami, I think. He nearly ran into the back end of. Cano is running in fourth place ahead of Valentin Peroni. The two of them are going tit for tat so far. And here comes another tiss, is it? No, it's going to be Peroni. A tit for tat, a battle for fourth. I love that one, Chris. It really did uh, amuse me greatly. <laughs> but yes, uh, the battle for fourth is really keeping the timing screens and our monitors less up here because the battle for second is just staying stationary at the moment between Gonzalez and Pugliese. But these four here are chopping and changing left, right, and centre up the inside, which means that the battle further back have been able to just hold the gap to about two seconds. So maybe Pablo Olivares and Zani with Fernandez and also Longarella might be able to just start closing in. Look a little bit closer that time round as we go under the new bridge towards turn number 10. But for now, the battle for fourth is led by Kano, Peroni, Ikigami and Tassini. And I think this battle here, Chris, I may be wrong, but we'll have to keep an eye on, on it as we come across the line. Might be just starting to reel in battle for second between Gonzalez and Pugliese. The last time round, actually, Cano was three tenths of a second faster than the two riders just in front with Morelli. He's gone, he's out of here, he's already getting the t-shirt for the win, getting the trophy, he's already 3.4 seconds, 3.6 seconds, 3.8 seconds, it was changing as it came across the line, up the road from Gonzalez. Come across the line now and once more, four tenths of a second, Cano, Peroni, Ikigami and Tassini were uh, were faster than Gonzalez and Pugliese. So this battle Tassini. for the podium isn't over yet as Tassini 
there it leads to charge from uh, P4. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Tassini. He takes a 3 and one there. Maybe not the smartest move if we're saying, because as you rightly spotted, they were reeling in that second group, the battle for the podium, and Cano was doing a mighty fine job leading that group. So the last thing they want is to be chopping and changing and losing time as Gonzalez and Pugliese try to break away. It looks like Gonzalez and Pugliese in that battle for the podium have set, as you can see here, bike thanks to Cini, who's now fancying leading this pack ahead of Cano. And they are really, really getting the hooks into the two ahead of them here. Oh, to see you on a bit of a wobbler there on the curves on the green there, so he has to watch out. It's Cano got the run after that mistake from Tassini. If I was the few riders behind, yes, I was about there to say it that. Is. And then no. Tassini gives yeah, it as well. It's like Tassini thinks, so. well, if you want to do that, I'll get the rest to follow me. Lighting astern as they come through turn at number nine. Cano knows he's got the pace, and if you, you'd be really smart to sit in behind Cano because he was the rider leading the charge towards. Gonzalez and Pugliese, but Tassini's having none of it. He's the one that thinks that he has the pace to close on the Raiders. And then a bit of a moment there, that was two moments there for Cano on the entrance and on the exit. It looks like he might be getting a little bit frustrated with Tassini here because he can see the two Raiders coming back to them, but only when he's leading the pack. So for now, it's Tassini from, Pro from Cano from Peroni and Kagami. So Peroni and Kagami, they're being clever about this. They're just letting the other two in front of them battle it out and close up to the two just in front. They come across the lane once more. And on that lap there, Marco Morelli, I don't know what he's playing at. He was in the 152s that lap, that last lap. So that was the first time he's dropped into the 152s, but still six tenths faster than the riders behind. And the battling going on between Cano and Tassini made them drop into the 153s. But thankfully for them, Pugliese and Gonzalez were almost in the 153s as well. So the closing in, just ever so slightly, and they're almost on the back of them now. Yeah. Turn three, Carlos Cano, Peroni, Ikigami, and Tassini, they're there. They are with Pugliese and Gonzalez. Yeah, Tassini, the fastest rider on track on that last lap. And as you can see, oh, they right. are now right on the back of Gonzalez and Pugliese. Morelli may be in a world of his own, but this podium battle is far from over. Pugliese and Gonzalez, I don't think they're going to see what's coming here because you've got Carlos Cano, a train led by Carlos Cano, Valentin Peroni also on it, Gabriel Tassini and Seiyu Ikigami all chasing down the podium duo ahead of them and Cano is leading the charge. It looks a matter of when and not if for before the Spaniard and the riders following him catch the two ahead of them. Well, the race for the win might be getting sealed and delivered by Marco Morelli, but the race for the final podium positions is not over and done with yet. Pugliese still in that comfortable second for now, but he's got Gonzalez that's trying to hold back the charging four of Cano, Peroni and Tassini and Ikigami further back. It's still Olivares the leads the group just behind ahead of uh, Perez. Perez has come through from 13th, he's up to 9th now, so he's had a great last couple of laps. And Pau Alcina running at the top 10 of Zani, Fernandez, Longarela, Tinez at the Venezuelan. Torres, who's had a difficult race so far, he's found himself back in the points. He's in 15th for now. As a tick off another lap, five laps to go on that last lap there. Marco Morelli leads away almost four seconds ahead of the rest, but here comes the freight train of Pugliese, Gonzalez, Cano. Peroni, oh, about, oh, was that a mudguard? That looks like the front mudguard has just come off one of the bikes in the that battle of Pugliese's machine. It could be right there, Chris. I'm not sure who it came off, but yeah, one of the front mudguards. It's not Pugliese. Gonzalez, perhaps. Could it be like, Gonzalez. Yeah, the guys have them here. We'll catch a replay of that when we get an opportunity. Yeah, I think it right looks like Gonzalez. Just going to run a little bit wide there. Is Peroni going to make the move through on him? He's got the inside line. Here comes a block pass. No, Cano gets cut across in front of the Argentine and holds on to P4 for the moment as we see Morelli nearly out of picture ahead of P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 and P7 as these Pugliese and Gonzalez are going to have a whole lot of company coming their way soon. They've actually opened up a little bit more of a gap but it seems that Cano just has the pace. He said the fastest, or he was the fastest rider on track, a low 152 flat. Here we go again. Where is this mud guard going to come from? Ah, you can see it was a it's, a... it's a back rear guard, I think, coming from uh, Gonzalez's machine. Ah, here we go again, the slow-mo. I think it was a front guard there, Chris. If you just watch, you can see it already coming loose, just behind Pugliese at the 31, the number 11 of Gonzalez. As it goes into braking, it's already come off, so you can see it there. So I don't think that oh, will yes. deter him too much. Uh, he probably wouldn't even notice it's gone. It was just a, a little bit of a, well, maybe a Mario Kart style, throwing a red shell backwards <laughs> just to deter the riders 
behind. I was about to say, before that happened, it looked like Ikigami was starting to drop off the back of Peroni and Cano. However, it looks like Ikigami does have the pace, and it's Tassini that's dropping back, and he's might incur the wrath of the stewards very shortly because he's just been given a track limit warning, I believe. It's flashed up on a screen there. Yeah, track Number limit four. in his way, so he's got to keep it clean and tidy. Peyroni and Cano then, shoulder to shoulder as they come in to turn one down the front straight. Looks like Cano is going to hold on to the advantage here. Peyroni has a little look up the inside. Say, yeah, he's not going to try that, try that on the outside, is he? He isn't, and he, in fact, he actually loses a place to Peyroni as a result. So, Cano, can he manage to get another fantastic result from the back of the grid? Last time he started up back of the grid was P28, I believe, in Mizano. He picked up a double P6. Only one European Talent Cup race here today. He's on for at least a P4 if he can maintain this, but he wants something better. He sees Gonzalez and Pugliese battling ahead of him, and he fancies his chances of an amazing podium. As we look at the championship standings, he will lose the championship lead, so it's about points as well as Morelli runs away with victory here today. But Cano was the championship leader coming into this one. He would be seven points behind. If he were to pick up a podium place, he would reduce that gap significantly. Yeah, it's all about trying to pick up as many points as possible for Carlos Cano, just to try and solidify the good points haul that he's had so far in the last few races. And at the moment, it looks like he can get close to Pugliese and Gonzalez, but since Pugliese got to the front of that group, he's just been able to hold pace. He's back into the 151s, the low 52s, the last couple of laps, and it looks like he's starting to drag Gonzalez along with him. Yeah, we had a rider out the seat there. Uh, they managed to keep it, stick, keep it upright, sunny side up, as they say. So Cano, yeah, he's just dropped off a little bit of the pace here as Gonzalez and Pugliese. Just show a little bit more on the pace. So what have we got left? Just coming up on to three laps to go around the final corner. We'll only do that a few more times. Three laps to go. Morelli is in a world of his own. His lead has reduced, but he's still 3.5 seconds clear ahead of Pugliese and Gonzalez. They are going shoulder to shoulder into turn one. As we see, Cano still leads P4. Peroni just cannot make a move stick with Ikigami once again biding his time at the back of this battle for P4. Tassini then has been dropped by the three riders ahead of him. It looks like he will come home in a comfortable second place. With Leonardo Zani, Oliveira's Palancina currently completing the top 10. Here we go, Peroni up the inside of Cano. He takes P4 off the hand of the former championship leader, well, current championship leader, until the checker flag comes out. The hand comes back to say, drop in behind. Cano is having absolutely none of it. Makes a move up the inside once again. And it will be Cano who leads this battle for P4. Yeah, they're going to have to stop worrying about each other and say, follow my leader, basically, because the other two are starting to get away now. So Pugliese and Gonzalez, as I said a couple of laps ago, they've dropped back into the 151s. On that time round, Gonzalez hit his personal best lap of the race at 151.945. So he's just closed back up to the back of Pugliese. In fact, he's the only rider in the 151s. He was indeed, yeah. The other riders were all in the 52s. One of the riders in outside the top 10, 53. Peroni up the inside of Cano. Cano runs a bit deep, a bit close for comfort there. And Cano chops off the front of Peroni. So Cano's wanting Peroni to follow him, but if he's going to make mistakes like that, and miss apexes, the ball, nobody's going to be able, be able to catch the two just in front. As you can see now, that gap is up to about seven, eight tenths of a second, maybe a little bit more as they come down towards turn 14, ticking off another lap. Marco Morelli, your race leader, who will be taking the lead of the championship if it stays as is. Over the line to come, two more laps to go, with the lead back up to three point three seconds ahead of Pugliese and Gonzalez and that's him round yeah eight tenths of a second between Gonzalez and Cano and that's just because Cano is making a couple of mistakes on that last lap there so he will be looking to try and get the hooks into the back of Gonzalez and reel himself along with Peroni and Ikigami up to the podium battle but it looks like for now Pugliese is the one starting to struggle a little bit. He was back in the 152 is there. He lowered the pace of Gonzalez as well. And considering all that was happening on the last lap with Cano, he was only a tenth of a second slower than the two riders just in front. So if they can have a clean lap this time round, Cano will be on the back of them with one lap to go. Yeah, coming around turn five, 
now it's Pugliese who leads Gonzalez in the battle for P2, and Cano who leads Peroni and Ikigami in the battle for P4. We've got about a lap and a half to go now, just over. It looks like Gonzalez and Pugliese might just have enough left in the tank to ensure they don't fall into any trouble. Cano has been trying and trying and trying. We thought, we thought it was a matter of time before he actually caught them, but he got very close, a couple bike lengths behind leading that group, but all this chopping and changing between them has seen that gap and advantage open up again. So as we're going to see a move here, Ikigami Ooh, up to the inside of Peroni. Peroni runs that, runs that one wide, he left the door open for the Japanese rider. That's an ideal for the Argentine. Ikigami then, he might see P4, another P4 of the cards for him. Yeah, chasing his first podium is Ikigami, a rider that's really come to the fore in European Talent Cup so far this year of Asia Talent Cup fame. And this gap between third and fourth, it has come down. It's about half a second the last split. So as we approach the final lap, your race leader Marco Morelli on the number 97 M-Lab racing machine. He is looking for his second race win of the season. And barring any mistake on this final lap, he will do so. Gonzalez chops out of the slipstream of Pugliese, but for now Pugliese just holds it. Ikigami, Peroni looking up the inside of Cano. Cano still holds it. Bit of a bobble up the inside for Carlos Cano, but it's only three or four bike lengths between Gonzalez and Cano for now. They're with them. The battle for second and third is not just a two-wheeler, it's, uh, it's a 12 wheeler now, so a four-wheeler from a 12. So it's Pugliese, Cano, and also Gonzalez in the middle of those two. Cano looking for a podium, he's looking to solidify his points and try and hold on to the back or hold on to his championship lead. If he can finish second, him and Morelli will go in to Portimao in a few weeks' time, equal on points. Gonzalez up the inside of Pugliese, almost sets up the Italian, but for now it's Gonzalez. It's a five-way scrap then for the podium. Morelli has got it covered. Gonzalez currently leads Pugliese in the podium places, but here comes Carlos Cano, Ikigami and Valentin Peroni, all riders of considerable skill and talent with half a lap to go oh, just Cano. over, and Cano has made his move. Cano has done it, he's in third. He will only be four points behind Morelli if it stays like this, but he wants more. He wants second. He's around the outside late in the break. Here, here comes Peroni. Oh my goodness, and they all go to me. Oh, oh no! Peroni tapped. Ta Cano. Cano is over the handlebars. He is out. Disaster for your championship leader. It's going to be Morelli taking the championship lead, but who's going to finish on the podium? Peroni. He is the one that started all of that. He is out. Ikigami chasing his first podium. Puglietti chasing another one. Gonzalez wants a third podium of the season. Up the end, hey, not quite done. Morelli, he's going to come across line. Ikegami carries the speed right the end. He's done it. Morelli from Gonzalez, from Puglietti, and Ikegami just missing out on a career first podium. But my goodness me, what a dramatic finale to the European Talent Cup as Marco Morelli was untouched out front. He was majestic, he was marvellous, he was Marco Morelli. Brilliant, brilliant stuff from the Argentinian, who's back on the top step, but what a dramatic final lap in that podium battle. Oh, drama by the bucket load in Barcelona. Carlos Cano had made his move after hunting down the pack for the entire race, from the back of the grid, made his move for P3 wanted P2, Valentin Peroni made his move, it all just got too busy, and Cano crashes out at turn 10, 11. Here we see the replay, 71 on the outside, it was Peroni then who just tagged the back of him as he tried to go up the inside. I don't think this is the last we're gonna hear of that for Peroni. He went up the inside, tagged the back of Peroni, uh, Cano I should say, and now the championship leader coming into this race has picked up no points has lost the championship lead to Marco Morelli what a stunning race from the number 97 such a disaster there for Carlos Cano just the slightest of touches from Valentin Peroni and Marco Morelli points to the camera hey I, I see you there I've done it second victory of the season for Marco Morelli, who does retake the championship lead on the number 97 M Lab racing machine. So a bit of a bit of a stop there. Well, a slow slide in towards the marshals. He goes as they celebrate. He's a very popular rider around the park paddock as Marco Morelli, and he's a very popular rider in the M Lab racing team. You've got to remember, he almost his career was almost over one year ago. He was only called, called up to the M Lab team 
and a replacement for Casey O'Gorman, who was out of the team and then moved on to Pastures New and Marco Morelli. MLAB needed a rider that would take them to the front, be at the front, and he has once again as the Argentine flag waves for Marco Morelli. He's got a bit of a fan base already, does the young Argentine rider. And as I said, he's a very popular, popular guy around the paddock. And everyone will be extremely happy for him. And once more, he retakes the championship lead from a luckless Carlos Cano, uh, who crashed out on the final lap at the very same corner that we see Marco Morelli celebrating with the Argentine flag. And fly high it does. And we can imagine we'll be seeing much more of that throughout the season. Gonzalez just took second ahead of Pugliese on the run to the line by only two hundredths of a second. Gonzalez and Pugliese, another two title contenders, just a little bit further back in terms of the standings, but they are well and truly in the mix. Bo Pugliese, a race winner back in Mizano, and Gonzalez picking up his third podium of the season after what was, well, we can't sugarcoat this, a disastrous Estoril with no points scored, but here in Barcelona, he's back on the podium. Ikigami equals his best result and fourth ahead of Valentin Peroni. We might see a penalty come his way after that clash with Carlos Cano on the final lap. Gabriel Tassini, great ride for the AC Racing Team rider and four uh, and sixth on the number four. Ahead of Leonardo Zani, Pau Alcina, Jesus Torres on the final lap went from 15th up to 9th after a disastrous start for him. He was all the way back, mired back in 25th in the opening couple of laps. And the Estrella Galicia 0 0 rider finishing just behind his teammate of Pau Alcina. Those two came to a bit of blows in Q2 yesterday after the checkered flag and <laughs> hopefully not coming to any blows in the race here today. As we see celebrations are already beginning down in Park Fermi for Marco Morelli, the MLAV racing team rider, and it's a, another great victory for them, a very popular team. And he'll be chatting to our man down on the ground very shortly after he gets weighed, <laughs> first of all, by the officials. But here's the opening corner. Marco Morelli tears round the outside at turn one ahead of Gabriel Tassini. We must remember, got the whole shot, a fantastic start from third on the grid. He came across the line to record another victory in the European Talent Cup. Numero uno for MLAV Racing. And the team that is headed by Macaulay Webb, the team manager, all the way through the team mechanics, the technicians, and of course, Jeff, who is who is in charge of the hospitality unit, the truckie as well, who sets us sets it up every weekend for MotoGP and some of the the Junior GP events, and has been given us some very delicious Italian coffee this weekend as well. So, very hospitable team a very popular team as well, and MLAV have a new star on their hands in the form of Marco Morelli. You can see Eddie O'Shea running over to congratulate the team as well. A big result there for David Gonzalez. Another podium for him in the AC Racing Team, another popular team down there. They always, no matter whether they finish first, second or third, there's always a big party down in the AC Racing Team. And you know, as soon as they win a race, there is going to be a party for the ages all the way into Sunday evening. You can imagine the first win for Gonzalez is not too far away. Giulio Pugliese, a good day at the office for the CF Moto Aspar Junior Team rider. Another position, another important podium and points for the young Italian rider on the number 31. But it's Marco Morelli posing for pictures with a P1 board. And after that is done, we'll be hearing his thoughts on the race, his dominant display here in Barcelona with our very own Chris Jordan, who I think he's heading over to chat to just about now. So in a few moments' time, we'll be hearing how easy it was, or maybe not so easy it was, for Marco Morelli out front during the European Talent Cup. But a very convincing race win for uh, number 97. So after the picture being taken with Marco Morelli, you've got... Gonzalez and Pugliese, they'll be posing for their pictures as well as we're about to hear from your race winner here in Barcelona, European Talent Cup. He's down with Chris. 
Marco, it was a Morelli masterclass as you become the championship leader and you're back on the top step. How are you feeling after that race? Yeah, I feel amazing. I think all the weekend we had a, a good work with the team. I feel super good with, with this team. And, and yeah, the race was, was difficult you know, because it was hot. And at the final of the race, it, it was a little bit more windy. So this is difficult to, to, to stay on the track, difficult to, to go along because one race alone is, is difficult. All, all the time, you with your piece, nobody else. And, and yeah, super good, no? Uh, I think, yeah, I'm happy the bike goes so good. And what I say, the team is amazing. Uh, I feel so good with them. And yeah, keep it rolling, try to do my own thing, no? And, and that's it. Thank you for all the support, all the teams. All the teams, no, my team and all, all my sponsors, my family, and yeah, good, thank you. Y ahora en español, porfa. Bien, la verdad que fue una carrera complicada, ¿no? Porque hacía calor, al principio estaba bien, rompí un poco el grupo, bueno, me, me escapé, pero luego al final fue difícil de manejar porque incrementó un poco el viento y era más complicado de, de hacer las dos últimas curvas, por ejemplo, porque venía de cara y te tocaba la parte interior de la moto, te echaba un poco para afuera. Pero bueno, al final estoy contento. Durante todo el fin de semana hicimos un, un gran trabajo y, y creo que esto es fruto de ello, ¿no? Así que muchas gracias a todos, a toda la gente que me apoya. Eh, y nada, súper contento. Gracias. Gracias y felicidades. Well, he said it was difficult, but he made it look really easy. Marco Morelli went for pole position as we had a couple of riders coming together on the start. Thankfully, both looked like they were able to walk away from that one. But the whole shot went to Ticini to turn one with Morelli chopping around the outside and Gonzalez moved up to second early on. But it was Carlos Cano who stole the headlines in the opening couple of laps as he charged through from the back of the grid and was in sixth position early on. Pugliese, he would take over the orders in second to lead the charge, but Gonzalez once more took over at the front of the second group. Cano, Peroni, Ikigami and Tassini were battling for fourth, down to seventh. And during the midway point, running wide was Carlos Cano. There was a bit of fun in games between this four as they were trying to help each other catch the battle for second and third as Morelli was off and running into the distance. Tassini made another move up the inside on Cano, but it wouldn't be long left as Cano was back again and immediately would tell Tassini to follow him and Tassini would do the same to the two riders behind. A few laps remaining, this battle for fourth was really heating up, however, it would be Gonzalez, it would lose some bodywork, the front mudguard coming off at the number 11 machine, the AC racing team. But in the closing couple of laps, it was Cano, Peroni and Ikigami that were leading the charge back to second and third. Marco Morelli was starting to ease up the pace in the final couple of laps, but on the last lap, it was Gonzalez who take over second position ahead of Pugliese and up towards turn nine, Cano pulled this audacious and brave move into turn three, but it was Peroni who got it all wrong and, and threw Carlos Cano into the stratosphere and down came the championship leader and he would slip down to 20 points behind Marco Morelli who would take the victory here today in European Talent Cup and Gonzalez just snatching second on the line from Pugliese and Ikigami just missing out on a career first podium but once more it was Magic Marco who reigns supreme in Barcelona. Well, we've got three different nationalities on the podium for this one, an Argentine, a Spaniard, and an Italian for your podium in the European Talent Cup and the MLAV Racing Team representative up to pick the team's trophy ahead of this one. Pugliese, brilliant points for his championship charge here today. Another podium for the Italian rider, the CF Moto Asper Junior Team rider. Gonzalez, big celebrations from Gonzalez, the AC Racing Team rider, another second position at backing that up from Mizano, his third podium of the season. However, we're all chasing the 97, the MLAV Racing rider, Marco Morelli, who stands atop the podium once more. As we will hear the Argentine national anthem in a few moments after we have the trophies handed out 
to the top three and the MLAV Racing team representative, Mr. Josep Luis Santa Maria, will be handing out the trophy to MLAV Racing. Another winner's trophy for that team to take back to base. And plenty more they'll be hoping in Junior GP, the next race up in a few moments' time. Jacob Rulston, the Moto3 World Championship rider, he's here on hand to hand over the third place trophy to Giulio Pugliesi. CF Motor Racing Rider, another one to add to his collection. A big smile from him as well. And another Moto3 World Championship Rider, Joel Esteban. He's been a previous winner in this class as well last year, and rookie in Moto3, handing over a trophy to Gonzalez. But for now, it's going to be a race winner by Juan Marc Desnues, the Vice President of FIM Europe, who hands over the winner's trophy to Marco Morelli, his second of the season, and it won't be his last as we hear the Argentine national anthem ring out over Barcelona. Came into this season with no plan B, and it looks like plan A is working to a T. As it was another Morelli masterclass here at the Circuit de Barcelona in Catalonia, as the top three pose for pictures. Well, you can imagine we'll be seeing plenty of those top three on the podium for many rounds to come, as we have done so many times this season. They will be back in action at the next round in Portimao in just over a month's time as <laughs> Gonzalez can't get up to the podium. He's a little bit shorter than the other two, so it's a big step up for the little Gonzalez, but they're still only young, so I've got, I'm sure they've got a growth spurt on hand as the rose water gets sprayed over the teams and the fans down in the park for It's a very warm day here today in Barcelona. After rain throughout most of the weekend, it's dry and sunny, and the heat is beating down on us. And it looked like they were needing a bit of a refreshment after that one. 14 laps of European Talent Cup action. It doesn't get much more harder than that one. A big swig of water from your race winner, Morelli, as they get ready to celebrate long into the evening. So, this is how it all looked for your European Talent Cup here at Barcelona. Marco Morelli took the honours ahead of David Gonzalez and Pugliese running at your podium ahead of Ikegami, Valentin Peroni and Gabriel Tessini in your top three. Leonardo Zani and Paolo Sina in seventh and eighth ahead of Jesus Torres who had a bit of a disastrous race but came through to pick up seven important points. Pablo Olivares in tenth, he came from the back of the grid also ahead of Gonzalo Perez. Benyat Fernandez in twelfth ahead of Tinez Longarella and Marianas Nicolas who picked up a sole point after he started as many riders did from the back of the grid as well. Benjamin Kielet, the French rider in 18th ahead of Edu Gutierrez. Luca Agostinelli, the Vietnamese rider in 20th. Enzo Bellon. And then further down we have Remy San Juan, Miroslavov and Evan Boxberger rounding out your top 25. And then Ross Dagnini in 22nd and your Runners and riders that didn't finish. Carlos Cannon, your previous championship leader, was one of them. He missed out on important points in that one after tangling with Valentin Perone. So this is how it looks in the championship. Marco Morelli with 90 points leads away 20. A big buffer over Carlos Cano and Giulio Pugliesi. And the further 12 points back ahead of Valentin Perone, equal in points with Pugliesi. David Gonzalez, Jesus Torres, Leonardo Zani, Ikigami, important points for him in the last couple of races. He's moved up to eighth ahead of Gabriel Tassini and Pau Alsina rounding out your top 10 on 27. Pujosa had a disastrous weekend coming through the last chance race earlier on today and 11th ahead of Perez, Agostinelli, 
Kermantinez and Longarella running out of their top 15 ahead of Benyat Fernandez and Benjamin Kielet. Marianas Nicolas, who picked up a point today, he's in 18th ahead of Pantalikas. Da Costa, Olivares, Sessler, Tamburini, and Christian Daniel with Remy San Juan in 25th. And then Edu Gonzalez in 26th ahead of Eduardo Bertola at one point. So 27 riders have scored so far in 2024. But no one has scored any more than your MLAB racing rider, Marco Morelli. He reigns supreme once more. It was Magic Marco once again in European Talent Cup. They will be back in action in a few weeks' time in Portimao. But don't go anywhere because we've got a bumper blockbuster Barcelona race two for Junior GP. It's up next.